Hi, today as we use AutoCAD, we're going to be looking at how to use some of the drawing aids that are embedded in the program. We're going to start out by looking at Snap Mode. If I right-click on it, I can go to Settings, and we can look at how it is used. You have to turn Snap on, and then once you do that, you can tell it a specific amount of spacing. And right now, it's assuming that it's in inches, because we're in decimal unit mode. So that if I have, say here, 0.5 inches set, the mouse will only allow me to move in 0.5 increments because it will be snapping me to the junctions on the imaginary grid. And then we can also turn on the grid itself by saying grid on, and then it will be snapping me to an actual grid that I can view. This can be useful if you're trying to align things on a screen or get a basic sense of how big they are. If I change the snap spacing in the X box, it will also change the one in the Y by the same amount, because it's always going to maintain a square ratio. All right, so we'll say, okay, and you can see that my grid is now turned on, as is my snap. If I were to go into the line command and then move down, you can see that it's snapping me gently to only the junctions of those grid points. It will, in fact, not let me move anywhere else in between. So this is useful when I'm doing horizontal and vertical lines, not so much when I'm doing lines that are diagonal. Now I'm going to turn grid and snap off, and we're going to look at ortho mode. Ortho mode is used to create exact horizontal or vertical lines. You can only do straight across or straight up or down. You cannot do diagonals in ortho mode. As you see, as, as I try to connect to this point, it will only bring me down vertically to the same point. So if I want to be able to do diagonals, I turn off ortho mode, and I can turn on polar mode if I want more control over my diagonals. Now I can click where I want to, or I can right-click on polar mode, and I can choose a specific degree increments. By doing that, I make it so that my computer will give me a little notification every time I snap to that increment. So it's very helpful, say I need to draw several 45 degree angles in a row, I can do that using this snap method. And you can use the basic ones that are set with it, and then you can go into settings and work on different ones if you need to. You can add additional angles in using this box and the new feature. Next we have object snaps and as you see there are several different ones that you can turn on. We've talked about them to some degree in class. Most commonly we will use endpoint, sometimes midpoint, and center. And then when we are working with circles, we will use quadrant if we want to be able to get to the edge pieces. And frequently we will use tangent or perpendicular if we want to make lines that are related to each other or touch circles at a specific spot. If you have nearest turned on, it's going to snap to the nearest point on whatever line you're closest to or arc. And there is the node, which snaps to a specific point object, or a definition point. And then there's insertion, which allows you to snap to the insertion point of a block or an attribute that you've created. There's an intersection, which lets you snap to an intersection of any two objects. There's extension, which causes a temporary extension line when you pass the cursor over the endpoint, so you can see uh, where they would be if you need to click a place on that imaginary extension line. And there's parallel, which allows you to constraint a line segment so that there's a parallel oops, line which is adjacent to a, another line that you had already created. And there's a parent intersection, which snaps to what looks like an intersection, even though those two things may not be on the same plane. For example, if they are, in fact, um, 3D and they're on different planes. And that's most of the O snaps. There's 3D object snaps as well, which we're not going to deal with in this class. Then we have dynamic input which we've discovered as um, useful in some ways in that you can control some of your input, 
although you can also generally control most of this in the command line up here. And we do remember that we need to turn off dynamic input anytime that we're going to be using absolute uh, coordinate entry because otherwise it will interfere with the coordinates that we're attempting to put in. We can also control here the tooltips for the drafting tooltips. And so we can go to colors and we can change what different colors show for different things. Um, and then we can cancel that one and go back. We can do uh, an example of how it's going to look in both model space where we draw and layout space where we print things. And we can use settings only for dynamic input tools. We can make our input tools more transparent or we can make them bigger. And we're going to cancel this. And quick properties are used when you want to be able to control certain specific items and the quick properties palette if you select this will pop up and you'll be able to make changes to items that you've selected and then selection cycling says that if you have it turned on when you use quadrants it will start at the bottom right and then it will move in direction around the quadrants as you move um, Okay, so we're going to close this, and then we have our O tracking, which we talked about briefly in class, and that allows me to, if I have my O snaps turned on, use O tracking to line items up with each other and make sure that they match. As you can see, I tracked over without clicking, and now I can click on this intersection here and line up with this corner. All right, that's the basic information for drawing aids, and you will be using these on most of your assignments as you continue. Thank you.